Okay. Well, this is Landon. I, I'm going to finally state something publicly. I've been trying to get a video a week done just to, uh, just to keep visibility for the project up there, but it's kind of hard doing stuff that stays presentable. <laughs> and by presentable, <coughs> I mean something where I actually wind up learning something, but it is interesting to a person who doesn't necessarily understand the inner workings of the project and why, oh, you got the person's eyes to move might be kind of a big deal. But, uh, the big issue this week is just, I wound up deciding I wanted to spend some time on, um, character design and modeling, just because, uh, a lot of the time it's one of the more energizing aspects of, of the project, and I'm... The other interesting thing about it is the way I do it. I'm not necessarily an expert with Moho. Okay, I'm really not an expert with Moho. But one thing I kind of think I have going for me is I'm pretty good at uh, model design and rigging. And I use some techniques I haven't really seen other people use, so... I thought I'd um, let you into my head and see how, uh, show you how I wind up doing a lot of my characters on. Well, right now I have a few files up, specifically, uh, I, I tend to be a little scatterbrained, so I keep all kinds of stuff up. <laughs> this right here is Bolt. She's a speedster character. I decided, I have my old versions here, which didn't quite import properly. <laughs> uh, turned all the gradients off, but I was able to illustrate, actually import them from Illustrator as vector graphics. But the whole idea was, originally I wanted to, to have this big mask where you could only see this part of her face, but the big thing I noticed was, I actually really thought I gave her one of the prettiest faces I'd done so far. So I love the thought of uh, actually keeping her uh, keeping her unmasked since it's a uh, character trait that she's supposed to not actually be uh, <laughs> have a secret identity and I really like the thought of being able to show her face off. <laughs> but Uh, I made an earlier version of this model, and I've just now started to, <laughs> I just now started really fooling around with it, and doing an improved version. Specifically, I'm able to do this now. Yes, she has a functioning zipper. And that was something that I always wanted to do with this character, just because I thought it would be kind of interesting to see that. To where, you know, she, as you can tell, she's a really sexy, freely sexual character, and she likes showing off. But I like the idea that as she gets more serious, she can zip up. Like, if she's actually going to be really taking something seriously, she, she'll zip up. But, <laughs> I said I was here for character rigging, for an explanation of how I do character rigging, and that's what I'm here for. Um, the thing that's different about me than you'll hear with a lot of people is I like to use generics as opposed to starting from a sketch every single time. 
Uh, as for instance, this is a file I'm trying to, de I'm designing a bunch of different characters from the same gang. Uh, and this right here is a character who, uh, her name within the gang is Parrot. And, well, okay, there's got to be an easier way to show this off. Okay. Uh, yeah, I act like that actually did something. Okay, here it is. This right here is the sketch I did. Uh, it's pretty basic, pretty meh. Uh, it also wound up being the sketch that I built a character redesign around, and the original, uh, just generic model I used to do my first test animations was based around this sketch right here. But, I had a really vague idea of what I wanted the character to be like, if you notice, I just have her in basically spandex, pa spandex pants and a bra top. Um, I didn't really put a lot of thought into what her costume is supposed to be because with the aviary, I've had, I've had a lot of different ideas of what I wanted this gang to look like, and I like keeping it open. You'd be kind of shocked how open I keep it sometimes. A lot of the time, I just have completely unfinished sketches in here. But, but. Basically, what I decided I want to do for this video is I want to, as close to as I can from start to finish, show you how I build something using generics. Uh, the reason I showed this one off is that, yes, I actually did build the Lisa model based around that sketch. That's actually what her face looks like. Uh, her name is Parrot, and uh, this is her mask. I, I really wasn't that good at drawing birds, but I kept some references around, and uh, hmm. I, I think I was able to come up with something fairly passable. <sighs> but I have an entire file over here that's just called Parts. And literally what I do with it is, anytime I come up with something that's good that I know I'm going to want to reuse, I save it. I've got a domino mask right here, which I've also converted to glasses at times. Uh, I've, got a, I've got some shirt elements right here. Uh, some suit elements right here. Right around the time I converted to primarily generics... My big idea was I just needed to design one character in a suit, and then at that point I could reuse the suit assets as much as possible. And I'd almost never actually need to, like, true design a character on paper that had that was wearing a suit. And for the most part, that's been true. But. I have other different things going on here. I have um, generic physiques right here. Um, a few of them were just created as generics, but some some of them started out as a real character design. Then I just liked like starting from a sketch, and then I just liked the way the generic looked, so I put it into my generic files. And now it's something I can build a new character out of each time. At the moment, I have about one, two, three, four, five, six front view males, one side view male, one female side view, and three, or yeah, one side view female, and three basic female models. I have another generic I'm wanting to add in here, but I haven't got around to adding it yet. But these are usually something pretty good to start from. I also keep some assets around that I just that tend to be the more difficult ones. Like I have a whole layer here just dedicated to feet. I have a whole layer dedicated to hands. A new thing I've started is a layer dedicated to highlights. Which 
I'll explain what that is in a minute. And I have ears right here that I keep around. But, shoes. I have several characters that have circuits built into their costume design, so I've tried to keep some circuit board assets around to play with. But, back to what I'm actually here for. <coughs> My character... The characters I'm working on right now are a gang called the Aviary. The main idea I have behind the Aviary is they're just a gang of quasi-super criminals. Some of them have powers, most of them don't. And their gimmick is they're all named after birds. And the joke is that a lot of more established comic book universes have a lot of bird name characters. Uh, your Robins, your Hawk and Dove, the Penguin, so on and so forth. Uh, Falcon, Hawk, you know, Hawk, man, there's lots of Hawks. But <laughs> uh, the joke would be that since, without directly acknowledging that, the aviary would have characters such as Hummingbird, Parrot, Buzzard, Toucan, uh, Blue Jay, Sparrow, Swallow, Puffin, Cockatoo, Pigeon, and Buzzard. And like I said, Buzzard twice. Uh, I have, I have them written into a few particular episodes, but, um, the main, uh, I have... Probably about seven of them specifically written into episodes. Um, you might be able to guess, due to the fact that I put a little bit more care into what I have of her model so far, Lisa might wind up being a little bit more important than most of the rest of them. But, I am I am intentionally writing uh, an episode... I did write an episode where uh, the character Toucan, Toucan was featured. So, Toucan's going to be the one I'm doing. Uh, I don't really know how to zoom around, but hopefully you can see where my uh, mouse is right here. I've got all my layers set up. Well, not all of them, but enough to start. And I imported the reference file, which, well you know, the photo reference file, which is just a bunch of pictures of toucans. Because I needed to have some idea what a toucan looks like when I design the mask. And um, I have this right here, what I call my reference layer. This is a little bit more than I normally put into a reference layer, because a lot of the time... I just know what generic I'm starting with, and I put that generic in there. <sighs> yeah, I put that generic in there, and then I I just start building around it. Well, I put two generics in there this time, just because there might be some... I might wind up mixing and matching, which is something I do quite often when I'm designing a character just from generics. Uh, and I also have, uh, I have hands over here, um, I haven't quite decided which ones I'm planning on using yet, but, oh, that, that looks ugly. Okay, I'm probably not using that one, at least for this character, because Toucan is... As you may have picked up with Dynamic Debutantes, most of the main characters in the story are female. So, uh, having male characters in any kind of important role is kind of a rarity, but Toucan is one of the few that I wanted to use as a male character. But, basically, usually what I start with whenever I'm doing it, whenever I'm building from a generic is well like I said I have this whole 
little unit right here. I've got a little bit of everything about him. It's like they're all separate parts. They could all be separate layers. Usually I start with either the head or the torso, and I am going to start with the head this time. To keep track of what I have and haven't done, a lot of the time I like to actually cut it out of the layer and then paste it into the layer that is going to become the head. This right here is my head. It's about as generic as it gets. So I do want to change that up a little bit. When I was voicing this guy, I kind of voiced him like a game show host. And <laughs> so I just, I've always had this idea of him having this really, like, narrow face. Like he's, ooh. This is where I'm, oh, God, that looks gross. Ugh. I may be in the in the minority on this, but I actually liked Moho a little better before the Bezier handles. <laughs> a lot of the time, whenever you're dealing with a point, usually you just want to make the uh, round thing pointy or the pointy thing round. And that's about as much as you really think about it. <laughs> And otherwise, you kind of wind up getting weird shapes out of it. Well, using the uh, pings that they give you to start you off with colors, I usually, when I'm starting a model out, I go into the skin tone, the skin one, and I just maybe try to decide like what kind of complexion I want this character to have. Uh... I'm thinking this guy, he's he's Caucasian. Um, probably nothing too special about him. Uh, one thing I do try to do, though, is I... Honestly, back before I used Moho, I really didn't think about the stroke all that much. I just used the stroke. And dear God, that stroke is gigantic. Most of the time when I'm building a model, I work higher than I sh at a higher size than I should. So, I wind up usually defaulting to 1.2 for stroke for the outline of whatever body parts I use. And, <laughs> that, it, it winds up adjusting when I shrink it down, but... Yeah, this right here is basically the start of... The, this is the guy's head. This is the first thing about him that's actually going to be a little personal. The next layer I'm thinking about is... Usually I wind up doing the head and the torso right back to back just because... Mm. Those are really just the core of the character and... oh. You're going to hate yourself if you don't do this. <laughs> Need to make sure to rename that to head. So that I know what it looks. <laughs> so that I remember what I'm on. I'm probably going to forget several times in the meantime. But uh, I'm going to call this layer torso. And I'm... Ugh, do not want to do that. I'm putting my basic torso in here. So far, I don't necessarily have... Ooh. What is with those big, ugly strokes? <laughs> I'm not planning on having this guy shirtless. So, what I'm leaning towards for his shirt is a yellow color. A lot of the time when you're working 
especially if you're doing superheroes, your first instinct is to go just really extreme and bright on the colors. Uh. Yeah, that's okay. That's the right piece. Okay, uh, if I'm right, that will read as his pectoral muscles and not his breast. I guess I will find out. But what I usually do whenever I'm putting a highlight on something, I try to make the stroke the color of whatever is behind it and then the fill usually the color of the stroke that the that I gave the item just because that gives me a good reference of what the shadow looks like but in general it's just it's good to know what what you want your shadow to be and so far what I have right here is it's just a head and a shirt not really all that much I usually wind up putting the neck in behind, like after I've done the torso and the uh, and the head, just because a lot of the time the t uh, the neck winds up interacting with both of them in weird ways. So I'm gonna put that on a layer below the torso. I'm gonna call it neck. And there's my neck. Though, now that I'm looking at it, it's not quite... I kind of like to put a little bit more length on it, so... I'm just going to shift it around a little bit. Make it a little narrower. And again, for the most part, these are just... This is just the way I tend to do it. The big, the biggest takeaway from how I'm doing it is just, I get to the point of where I work almost entirely in moho, like, at this point. I don't, like, it's actually more awkward for me to draw something out than to, than to just go into moho and, you know, start working. But, uh, I'd normally put an Adam's apple right here but I one thing I decided with this guy is I think I want to put him in a turtleneck uh, I'm just gonna keep this little square right here off to the side and that's gonna be his actual neck and now I'm going to uh, let's see what I can do Well, first off, I'm going to convert its color to the um, same as his shirt. I'm going to set the actual neck part of the turtleneck right here. So I like the thought of it actually being able to see a little bit of it underneath the, the sweater. But, <laughs> yeah, the key thing about it is that the... The sweater is the main thing. Okay, and I'm going to lower the actual neck part to the back. So it's under his turtleneck. I don't know. For some reason, this guy, I just always had this weird idea of him in a turtleneck. And just having this weird sort of 70s flair. Uh, one of my main contributors on uh, on the project, the, my, one of my main musical contributors, uh, Michael Zool. I was best man at his wedding, and he actually wore a similar outfit as his groom's outfit. <coughs> uh, it was a turtleneck. It was a yellow turtleneck with uh, a blazer. I can't remember whether it was leather or not, but I do remember the, the turtleneck. And the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm like, yeah, 
that is actually a really interesting fun design for our uh, for our middle management gang leader because that's who Toucan is he's he's not he's not that high up in the gang but he is the guy who's in charge of the mission that you see him in uh yeah see this right here this stuff like this is why yeah I don't like the Bezier handles <laughs> but at this point we're um, giving him a little bit of character he's got his turtleneck uh usually the next thing I like to do is the pelvis is pretty important I've seen a lot of guys don't do pelvises as a separate piece but that's uh, it's just something I do and you'll I well, I can't believe I did that okay I I'm not necessarily gonna need that piece and as exhaustive as all this looks I actually needed something else Yes, this big giant pelvis right here. Look at it in all its glory. It's amazing, isn't it? Okay, we're going to steal this pelvis. I'm going to go into the um, fine layer tool. Grab it. I'm going to have to shr shrink it substantially. Because, yes, this pelvis is larger than several people. But anyway, we're going to go back into Toucan. I'm going to go into layer 5 right now to paste it in. And there it is, in all its gigantic glory. And we are going to shrink it a lot. The other reason... One of the reasons I kind of like to build my generics this way, uh, specifically leave what's left in the background, is it gives me a good reference point for, well, just uh, where everything's supposed to be, basically. So even if it's not... <coughs> I, I don't get... Basically, just I don't get too lost while I'm while I'm going around the character and I don't have things that are just completely out of place. And I'm just going to call this layer pelvis. And pelvis is actually going to go over the torso. Uh, the implication there is going to be that his shirt is tucked in. And let's see. <laughs> Oddly, I think I actually will keep the coloring, because um, if you look at these toucans, <laughs> yeah, they, they tend to have uh, black and white, or yeah, black and yellow for uh, the color of their feathers, so, of their primary feathers, so, yellow shirt, black pants, fine by me. I may put a belt buckle on it, or a belt on him at some point, but um, nothing's really jumping out at me as a good, obvious choice for a belt right now. Okay. You may notice over here um, I'm running out of blank layers. That's something I always expect to happen on this. I... I usually start enough so that I can get the first several layers out of the way, without without having to add any but then as I go I um, I duplicate my blank layers to get more to work with I'll add like two here for there and well though in some cases the numbers are pretty specific like I need I usually need about four layers at the bottom for um, biceps and legs I tend to do my legs as a single layer I, I know a lot of people do leg or thighs and calves and feet as all separate layers I tend to just do them all as one layer occasionally I'll switch that up when it comes to boots 
just because uh, because of the different ways they tend to interact with legs and how I might want to do something special to them. Um, I'm not necessarily sure what I'm going to wind up doing with his yet, but I do know... Eh. Well, I probably should just do the legs for right now, because the rest of the top is going to get kind of complicated as we go along. And the legs I more or less know what to do with. I'm going to go down to the reference layer, and I'm going to... Ugh. That leg's looking kind of ugly. Not going to lie. <sighs> okay. I usually try to line the leg up as well as I can with the side of the pelvis. And some of the things I, I like to do are I like setting up a couple points in, in the area of the leg that is inside the pelvis. That'll You'll see why once we get to the point of rigging it. But... Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Uh, and right now we got Oh, I forgot. Hmm. It's a cute little leg. We're going to leave this leg right here. And I'm going to completely... I'm going to realize what I just completely spaced. I imported all the suit parts into... <laughs> yes, I imported all the suit parts into this uh into this character for a reason yes 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 i'm gonna leave that leg right there just as reference for the moment i'm gonna s i'm gonna stretch my little suit leg out a little bit because i want it to be kind of baggy on him i'm uh, gonna try to adjust the A lot of the time, whenever I have something that's supposed to be kind of baggy like this, I like just having a few points here and there just kind of sticking out a little bit randomly. It gives it it gives it a feel of like fabric folding in a in a somewhat random way or somewhat controlled way, whichever one I'm actually really thinking about. I'm an idiot. Why the hell did I do that? Okay, control X, control V. And now we can just get rid of that layer and pretend it never happened. Uh, yeah. We're just getting rid of that layer. And this right here is our right leg. One inter one funny thing about this is the fact that when you get started on this, sometimes and and you can like even confuse yourself later on. Uh, you got to remember, yeah, this is where your right hand is, but the character's facing you, so this is their right limb, their right side. Uh, if you you can you can confuse yourself and name the uh, parts to the wrong side, so that's that's never a good idea. But mm, no harm, no foul. It looks pretty nice. 
Uh, going with the sort of 70s theme, yes. I <laughs> For some reason, bell bottoms make sense. Because he's... I don't know, he, he's fabulous. He is disco fabulous. He is the toucan. And... I have two pant legs right here for, um... For suit parts. And... Right now I have this one completed. Usually... Once I actually get one side that I'm happy with, I will... I'll just copy it, paste it, reverse it. Make sure everything is aligned up properly. Because that's another weird thing that happens a lot of the time when you're making your... When you actually sketch things out. You have this tendency to want to do dynamic poses when really you just need like poses that are as blank as possible when you're starting an animation model. And sometimes getting tempted to do a dynamic pose will actually wind up messing with you a little bit and you'll have stuff that's hard to deal with. Um, right now, one thing I'm going to do is I am going to increase the stroke right here. Just, I want to... It's specifically so that you can see the separation a little better. Um, there are a few other places I like to do that. Notably, here, on the face. Oftentimes, the chin is... It's more directly on top of a <laughs> of the neck, so you want to make sure that you get a good separation between the head and neck. Hmm. At this point, he's looking good. I'm thinking later I might wind up giving him some boots, like possibly like cowboy boots, but I'm. Um, I'm kind of done with the legs for the moment. I have ideas for the arms, but I think it might be a good point to start giving this guy some character, actually, like, giving him a face. I wind up laying these out a little bit strangely. Because I know... If you notice over in my parts file right here, I have lots of, like, hands, feet, clothing items. You'll notice I have almost no face elements. Well, with the exception of ears. Which, eh, honestly, I should probably get those ears right now. <sighs> Control C. But... That actually winds up being one of the things I do to try to... <sighs> mainly to try to make sure that I keep... <sighs> I keep my character's faces looking different. Like, I have a technique I use almost... Almost every time to do my different facial elements. Like, I have a technique for my lot... A technique for my eyes, a technique for my lips. But it's more about... I want to do it more that even though I do have a technique, I want to actually do it every time and not just reuse the same eyes and same lips because then eh, characters kind of lose a little bit of their flair, their individuality that way. And for some reason, I kind of see this guy as having a little bit goof, like kind of big goofy ears. I don't know why. But. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Looks fine so far. But. Yeah. This is our first step to it not just being an oval. 
For me, the next step is the eyes. Uh, the eyes I set up usually in about three and a half layers, and I'll explain what that means as I go. How I set up the base shape for the eye, I use a triangle. I I put a spot at the bottom to round it out, and then I leave the two sides. I round out the, the top, and then I leave the two sides pointy. And the reason for that is I like being able to create the base shape for the eye. And yeah, if you watch anybody else's tutorials, uh, or how to, I don't do it the way a lot of people do. Specifically, I, uh, usually what they do is they just put a square of white behind all their other eye rigging, and, uh, they use their other eye rigging to create the shape. Eventually, I might, I might wind up starting to adopt that, but it winds up helping me get a feel for what the character looks like to actually just shape out the eyes at the start. And then there is one more element I use for... Oh, I did just realize I need, to, I need to make sure to match the ears to his, uh, <laughs> uh, to his skin tone. <laughs> okay. Control-C. And... Like I said, again, I'm going to set the stroke to uh, his primary skin tone. Yep. That was certainly worth the extra effort. But he's right here. He's... Okay. Well, he's got ears. His eyes might be slightly out of position, but he has ears. And now I'm off to do the last element that I actually put on the head layer. Because um, all this so far is on the head layer. I like to keep a few really key elements there. But I also don't like to go... Uh, but I also don't want to put everything there. Like I said, I do the eyes in three and a half layers. This is the half layer because it's on the head. And then the other three layers are all separate. But since I usually never really need to do anything special with the nose, I usually just like to just put the nose on the, uh, on the head layer. And it's right here. And I'm well. The way I do it is, I just add a few points. Oh God! And um, I don't know. For some reason, I'm kind of thinking that. Like, I don't know, since he's going to be wearing a mask, I don't necessarily know that you'll see his, his nose proper. But it still helps me get a feel for the character. And I'm... I think since I put, I'm putting all this work into his face, yeah, I, I kind of have to un <laughs> unmask him at the end of the episode now. <laughs> But I do like the thought of him having kind of a kind of a long nose. <sighs> and there is one other thing that I, I want to use uh, since I was looking at it earlier. Let me go into my highlight layer over on my parts file. And 
these right here are all hair highlights. I took these from the Illustrator files that I imported. And because that that's one thing, it's hard to freehand stuff in Moho. Oddly, that's one of the things I like about Moho, but you wind up not getting a lot of... Doing stuff like this is a little hard. And then also you have uh, this. These are for cheekbones. And I like it. It's a nice, cool, hollow cheekbone. We're going to go over here. I'm going to figure out where it landed. <laughs> and the aviary is kind of weird because part of my mentality on a superhero universe is the fact that within the universe there are people who are the laughing stocks and like not everyone is the not everyone's the coolest villain not everyone's the not everyone's the hero everybody wants to be but in order to keep it authentic you you kind of have to keep those in there and then you still have to figure out a good way to logically a to b to c how did how did this character become who they are within the world that you you place them in but also you you need to find good ways to make sh to sell the fact that there uh, there are some guys who are kind of losers in this world um I always really wanted to play up how slim this guy was, and I like the thought of the hollow cheekbones just kind of, again, sell that a little bit more. Ugh, wrong one. Ugh. Yep, this is me messing up a lot. Mm -hmm. And we're we're good. No, we're not that good. I probably still need to move the ear in a little bit now that I'm looking at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I do make all these noises and say all these weird things while I'm doing it when no one's watching, too, as well. So, yeah, that, that's me. Well, at this point, I have everything I'm wanting to put on the head layer there, and right now, he looks like a rather frightening alien. But that won't last. And, as you can see, I have several several layers above it. I'm going to be using about three of them. The first one I'm going to do is the iris layer. Uh, I'm just going to go into the shape function and create a circle. Control uh, C, Control V and now he has irises. The way I do my character designs, since I wound up getting this idea from the Spider-Man cartoon from the mid-aughts that was, uh, it was called the Spectacular Spider-Man. Uh, an aesthetic choice they made on there was that everyone had irises but no pupils. And that was an aesthetic choice I wanted to copy with my own work. Um, part of it factors into the fact that since there are so many, so many of the characters are female, and I really just like the thought of like 
Well, just to sell the thought of a beautiful face, you really need two elements, eyes, lips. And those are the two things I focus on when I'm designing a face, as you can tell with the nose right here. But one thing I'm thinking of this guy is... I'm kind of leaning toward him being a dirty blonde, and... I don't know. I'm thinking a really light blue would work for his eyes right here. And that's his iris layer. I will name it properly. And I'm going to come back to this layer. But th those are his irises for now. And now, um, this is... I'm going to work on the eyelids layer. The eyelids layer right here is... The choice I usually make on how to build eyelids is I, I use a lot of triangles when I'm creating things. But it fits since that's how I set the eyes up as well. I put a point on the bottom, I go around on top and bottom, and I get a shape that's roughly, roughly eye-like. Not, I think, is wonderful and amazing, but with the properties of an eye. I realize that could be a little confusing. And I try to keep it just a, to where it uh, just overlaps a little bit with the with the eye shape because that's part of why I do the eye shape. I like the thought of that's how that is a good way to start building some of the individual character for a person. Just like what what are their eyes shaped like? And this is a pretty middle of the road version. Um, there's there's things I do to it later that factor in, but there is one other thing I do that I think it's unique to me, and it's part of how I compensate for when. One thing I don't do about how most people do their eye rigs. Okay, I'm gonna go with the shadow color of the um, of the face. The ooh. Ah, uh, and I did something stupid a minute ago, and it's fixed. And we're gonna go back into the eyelids, and it's fixed. So yes, this right here is intended as the shadow color. I'm going to, it's a bit of a just standard arc right now. I'm realizing now as I do this, I usually do this por portion a bit later and I'm remembering why. <laughs> but hey, basically what I do is I... I set this up, I do it to fill the fill the eye socket section. Since most of the characters are female, like say, um, well I think both of my female characters I have them have their eyes set up. I tend to use that area for eye shadow. And I try to factor makeup into action. It, it has a little bit of plot significance in the in the main story, but so I, I try to pay attention to things like eyeshadow and lipstick. But he's a male character; he's not that effeminate, so eyeshadow is not really an option for him. But the other thing about it is, I don't want it actually covering up the eyelids, so we're going to lower that to the back. And then we're going to copy it. And we're going to place it over by the other eye. And we're going to lower that to back. I'm sure there are some really... Uh, the, if there are any experienced Moho users on here, they're probably just looking at me and like cringing at all the extra steps I'm taking. 
but <laughs> eh, that's how I am right now. I'm sure I'll wind up simplifying it eventually. But to show part of why that has value, when I rig the eyes up, normally if it went past the eyelid you'd see it right there. But now I have the option of I can have the guy roll his eyes and they'll still basically be in the right spot. But the final layer that goes into the eyes is the eyebrows. I used to make this a lot harder than I needed to. I'm tr uh, I did learn to simplify it after a while, after I started following uh, Shonuff93 and all of his tutor tutorials, which have just been immensely helpful as I've been trying to jump from the just learning it to getting good enough to actually really dedicate myself to the project and start showing off my work but yeah I, I really used to overthink eyebrows a lot now again I just triangle a few extra points Kind of depending on what you actually want out of it. Let's see, I'll round the top out. And narrow that a little bit. And I'm not planning on keeping it this color, but it works for right now. But you might also see right here how it fits into the rig. Or it will fit into the rig. Okay. Well, since I stated earlier, I see the guy as being like a blonde. I'm going to go with almost like crazy, like bleach blonde. Like, <laughs> I don't know why, but it works. And there's one of his eyebrows. Just copy, paste, reverse. And... At this point, this guy's starting to look downright human. Though now I'm starting to run out of layers at the top. I need at least four layers at the top for a similar reason to why I needed four layers at the bottom. But I'm almost done. Oh, and I need at least six, so what am I thinking? <sighs> but I'm going to do his mouth now. And I'm just going to name it mouth. And also... Eyelids and mouth are going to wind up becoming switch layers, but I just named the uh, initial one mouth or eyelids because once I turn it into the switch layer, that layer is going to get renamed. And for the most part, how I set up, well, it'd probably go a little bit too into depth if I'm Inception. Let's see. I'd probably go a little bit too into depth <laughs> if I actually explained how I do my mouths. Uh, that's probably something I could do an entire other one about. But just to set up a basic mouth, there's really just one or two tricks I use. Uh, I use circles for this. And yeah, I'm doing it off to the side so that I can just change it around the way I need it to. I usually add about four points to the circle. And then um, basically 
at this point, you kind of have enough to do all the parts of the lips you're going to need. And it's just deciding, like, what you want the lips to look like. This is part of what I was talking about earlier with why I um, don't like to just keep a big collection of my lip parts. So that I can... If I'm actually doing the lips every single time, then that winds up being part of how I keep... That's how I give them character. And that's basically... That's a pretty standard upper, upper lip right there. I might wind up going a little sharper on uh, the cleft area, but... Yeah, that is a nice upper lip. I'm just now getting to the point of where I kind of know what I'm doing with the bottom lip. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, s I do the basic setup about the same. And then I... Yeah. What I'm kind of wanting to do with this guy is I like the thought of him having sort of thin lips. So... As opposed to, like, I, I went a little bit fuller with uh, the two other characters I have on here. I've got... Uh, I went really full with her lips, and then I kind of went middle of the road with Lisa's, but I, I like the point of just giving her, like, a really striking expression. But for Toucan right here, we're... We're just going to go with thin lips... And then once we have both of these parts together, yay. <laughs> the goal is to get them to connect in a way to where nothing's showing. And then the other big thing I do is just, it's a good way to... Ugh. Well, the one thing I normally like to do is... It's a little bit difficult because he's a male character, he's not wearing lipstick. So I can't get as crazy with the choices. I kind of have to stay in a certain really limited range of pinks. But... <sighs> he's got a pretty basic mouth right here, and... Just to imply that they're on different planes, I go different colors with the upper lip being darker. And here's his face. Oh, man. Well, at this point, he's starting to kind of take shape. I was looking down at the length on this video. I'm thinking I'm probably going to wind up breaking it up a little bit. <coughs> I'm going to at least finish the basic uh, the basic design on him. Then I'll probably... I might do one video that's just the rigging. And then another one that's just setting up the eyes and the mouth for blinks and lip sync. But for right now, he's looking pretty good. Oh. But I have him set up. Um I'm gonna try to do his hair. I'm gonna go pretty simple with his hair. Uh let's see. Use a little triangle. <laughs> Control C, control V. I'm just going to do like three little triangles together. Slightly different sizes. So 
slightly different angles. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to make a little circle right here. It is really easy to start sounding like Bob Ross when you do these things. But, yes. You may be able to figure out what I'm going to do from here, but <laughs> I'm just going to do it anyway. I'm Okay, I get rid of the lines I don't want. And then this goes to this. This goes to this. This goes to this. And this goes to this. Okay, that's weird. I honestly didn't expect it <laughs> to look that close to something right off the get right off the right out of the gate. But eh, eh, sometimes you get happy accidents. I might have went too sharp right there with, I guess you could call it sideburn area. But, mm, nothing you can't fix. Though, now that I'm reminding myself, since I've, I have been talking about going with this sort of 70s vibe with him, yeah, I probably should actually give him sideburns. Though, also that means that since that's a highlight, I should probably make his other sideburn an actual separate shape so that it can be where it needs to be, but also be behind the bangs. And it's all spiffy and wonderful, and it makes me happy, and... Um, oddly, I, I'm half tempted to almost give him a child molester mustache, but uh, I really should not have said that. <laughs> but no, nah, I'm I'm not gonna give that give him that. He he works pretty good as is. But yeah, that's his face, and I'm gonna call that layer hair. I'm probably not going to bother rigging his hair just because there's not that much to do with it. It's kind of short. And it's re realistically going to be underneath the mask. I have wound up putting off this point of the story, or this point of the design, just because... Ugh. Well, it's his arms. And the main reason I've put it off is just... Oh, man, I never named my left leg. Well, his... Uh, I'm planning on him wearing a jacket. And... I'm noticing some inconsistencies here. I might need to slim his legs down a little bit. But, all around, he he's still looking pretty good. He's still fairly representative of what I was wanting out of the guy. Oh yeah, that looks a lot better. Yeah, the idea is supposed to be this guy would not be very threatening on his own, but with his gang with him, he he can be. Mm. Let's see. Well, 
I like the thought of keeping him colorful, so even if it is a little bit inaccurate, <laughs> I'm probably not going to keep make his outer jacket black. Because I, I like the thought of him you know, doing a couple things to stand out. And when we start on... When we start on the jacket, we have to start with the arms. The choice I have right now is to either build arm, build him a new set of arms out of his base model. Uh, or just copy the jacket. I'm leaning toward copying the jacket arms, but if it looks really bad, I can... I always have other options. Control C. Control V. And, ooh. That looks really good right off the bat. Like, better than I expected it to. <laughs> well, I usually... Uh, this is actually something I've just started doing. I like to set up the arms with a section that goes pretty deep into the torso and that's just a rigging thing on uh, most of the female characters I rig their breasts uh, not necessarily because I want to do jiggle physics but because uh, it, it's really helpful to have it well like I showed with Bolt earlier how you can actually have them react to things like tightening her shirt tightening her suit up and like getting stretched out when she stretches her arm over her head things like that but yeah I'm I'm actually really liking the way this looks so I'm <sighs> I think I'm gonna actually I, I was tempted to go blue. I I know I'm going to go blue. So I'm probably going to give him blue gloves. But I think I'm going to go a little bit sort of a naturalistic brown for the jacket. And I love the way that arm looks. Yeah, you see what I was talking about earlier? Totally misnamed it. And I'm just going to copy and flip. And I am slowly realizing, I think I actually am putting him in the, uh, <laughs> the outfit Mike wore on his wedding. To his wedding. I'm not planning on using this portion of the suit, but... Uh, I guess... Tr I went back and forth on whether I just wanted to give him a normal jacket or a trench coat, and I think the trench coat's winning out. And... What that means is I'm going to put a layer I'm going to put a layer right over his torso. And yes. Getting Steam notifications while you're doing this is not necessarily helpful. But yeah, it's, I'm going to put it over the pelvis. Specifically so that everything that it needs to react to is where it needs to be. I'm going to go back into the reference layer. Mm -hmm. V. 
Yeah, and instead of copying both sides of it, I think I'm just going to copy the, the one side twice. It looks pretty good as is. Mm. If you've watched any of my other videos, the uh, this trench coat may look a little bit familiar. It, it does belong to Mr. I. <laughs> Which, God, I, I love that character. But his trench coat's been really helpful in just having it around. And we're going to copy the, or we're going to color this to the same color as the, um, as the sleeves. Uh, we're going to call this coat front because we're going to have to do a layer behind the legs. That's, uh, the back of the coat. Uh, I'm just going to go simple with this. There are probably... I think there's probably some tricks I don't know how to do yet that could make this work a little better than how I'm doing it, but since I don't know them yet, and I possibly don't even know that I don't know them, I'm just going to go really super simple. Huh. I'm wanting to go a little... Ooh, no, not, not that. I'm wanting to go a little bit lighter than the brown of the rest of the coat, just because it's supposed to be the interior of the jacket instead of the exterior. And then I'm about to get mad at myself because, yep. Okay. Need to make sure that we don't have <laughs> any, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is another one of those cases where I'm probably going to wind up uh, increasing the stroke width. And realize it. And then immediately realizing I need to uh, have a different color stroke. Yes. Cool. But yeah, stroke width winds up being really helpful to mark points where they're... You, you definitely want to show there's overlap. But yeah. There's his trench coat. Going about as... Yeah, and at this point, we're going about as basic as we can, and I just realized I forgot something pretty major. I'm going to come back to that. And let's see. Basically, the big thing I forgot is the fact that I do biceps and forearms in two pieces because the bicep needs to be able to go behind the torso, the forearm and the hand need to go in front of the torso. So, for the moment, I'm just going to keep from driving myself insane and uh, just put the hands there. Yes, I have a big collection of hands. And... Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and it never ceases to amaze me the type of stuff I, I mess up on these. But, yeah. But so far, uh, I like that fist right there. We're just going to stick with the fist. Yeah, we're just going to start with the fist. And then... Uh, <sighs> I 
And then in a little bit, we'll do the, uh, when I get around to setting up the switch layers, we'll set up some others. But I'm going to put one right here, control C, one right here. Flip. And our guy's got hands. <laughs> I do still need to set up his forearms properly. But he has hands. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Right arm. Control C. Okay, and I went to the right arm. Yeah. Yep, this is the new forearm piece, isn't it beautiful? Okay. That's part of how I set it up. I usually like to leave, uh, I like to like to darken part of it, hide the rest. And control C, control V, flip. And I'm not going to want that part to still be there on the main bicep layer so we're gonna wind up having to go back and and then delete it or delete at least part of it huh huh yeah Okay, and now it should more or less rig properly. Okay. And so far we've got most of Toucan together. Um, what I decided, what I think I've decided to do for his... Um, I'm kind of leaning toward the thought of possibly giving him cowboy boots. And I'm just kind of hoping I can do it properly. I'm going to start from the... Uh, just the feet on the, on the generic. I'm going to build... I'm going to build a heel back here. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to try to... Um, oh, no. I'm going to change colors here. I'm going to try to make sure that... That's like one thing I always try to do with at least my work. I really try to think in planes. And I try to make sure that I don't... I have some way of separating the planes out at all times. So 
it winds up giving it a little bit more of a three-dimensional feel. But yeah. And then we're going to copy the outer plane for the boot itself. Uh. Oh, I just realized I never actually left the reference layer. Control C. Control C. No, Control X. Yeah. And I'm just going to right right boot. left boot or um, back of the coat and this is the left boot Okay, get all the layers named, and this is the left forearm, right forearm, and pretty much all I have left at this point is his mask. How I've been designing the aviary masks, or I, I tend to do it in steps. Since I mainly went with this color, toucan color scheme, I'm probably going to... Okay, we're going to start with the color of his, uh, his blazer. Which, now that I'm looking at it, I probably need to... <laughs> uh. Yeah, sometimes you'd really be surprised what that one little bit of detail does. But yeah, we're going to go back into the mask layer. Uh, I'm just going to set up a really basic, just sort of superhero, super, super villain mask to start. And then we'll, we'll wind up shifting it as it goes. But yeah, since he's a toucan, don't really necessarily want his uh, his nose showing. Let's see. I'm gonna go. And now I'm going to do the next layer, which is a layer back. And now you can probably see why I was talking about wanting to unmask him at the end of the episode to, like, not hide all the work I just did. Okay. 
but yeah. We're gonna... Yeah, we're gonna raise the yellow portion again. Uh, sometimes when I'm I'm working on layers that are supposed to interlock like this, I like to try to... I actually like turning the visibility of the layer I'm working on off just so that I can see th how everything lines up. Because basically I need to That basically points out that the uh, huh, the black layer is going to be clear of his um, his eyes because now I I need to set up eye holes for him. There's still some things I'm thinking about changing up with the AV the uh, aviary eyewear, but so far this is how I've done the masks. You just give them flat out eye holes. Control C, Control V, flip. <laughs> and let's see what it looks like. And now I'm going to use a trick that I just recently learned that I used to have to cheat like crazy. Uh, I'm going to turn the stroke and fill off. And I'm going to use the create shape tool. Yay! And now we actually have a mask with eye holes. Ooh, God, and here comes the fun part. That big old gigantic beak. Uh, let's see. Oh, though, I did just remember there was something else I did kind of want to add to the yellow portion of the mask that I, uh, I forgot to. <laughs> okay, we're gonna trim this down a little bit. Not that far. Okay. And then we're gonna make some circles. And they're going to be a nice, pretty green color. Eh, prettier than that. And yay. Let's see. Because, yeah, I like the thought of referencing the... Uh, the different shading. In kind of a fun, cute way. Let's see. Yeah, the this is in reference to this right here, and just the slight green tint around the eye. And just kind of want to give the mask a little bit of extra flair. And... 
Now we're back onto that beak. <laughs> that, that, that beak. <laughs> I think I'm going to go with a similar color to the, uh, well, I could probably go a little, a little lighter. Possibly a lot lighter. Uh, yeah, we're going to start off with green <laughs> as the central color for the beak. Oh, no. Uh... Because the beak of the toucan is fairly round, gonna shape this up a little bit. Let's see, we got I'm gonna just put a couple little streaks on it. Let's see. Let's go with a really light blue. Uh, yeah. For some reason, I have the song Erotica by Madonna stuck in my head. Because for some reason, Spotify seems to think it's my favorite song of all time. No idea why. Just, they do apparently. I, I'm not one of the marketing geniuses at Spotify. But yes, the... We're designing the beak right now, and... It is a beak. Well, you know, it's a beak. I'm tempted to put some more orange in there, but I, I'm i kind of struggling with knowing where it would fit. And also, this isn't supposed to be necessarily a one-to-one -one representation. This is, uh, this is supposed to be sort of a stylized you know, criminal mask. Mm. Uh, and we've got it right here. And I'm going to narrow it a little bit just to kind of imply that it's this stripe along the top. I love it. Ah, beautiful. And then finally, I n one of the running themes I notice on almost all of these is uh, there's red around the tip of the bill. So I'm just going to make a little red triangle. Give it a little bit of roundness, and then just incorporate it into the rest. This is going to be hilarious when I have to actually turn this into something from a side view. <laughs> but, as it stands... This right here is... Toucan. I'm going to drag him into the... I'm going to drag him into the, st the stage area real quick just to see how he renders.
And yeah, I am going to have to either move all of those other elements out of his... Out of his model. Or at the very least, I'm going to have to... I'm either going to have to delete them or just flat move them out. But we're going to get rid of the, all the reference stuff and take a quick look at how he renders. Not too bad. And without the mask. Again, not too bad. Oh. At this point, I probably would be start. I'd probably start the the rigging, but I'm pretty sure I've gone on long enough as is. Uh, this is how I do the modeling. If nobody, if this isn't too horrendously long and nobody is willing to watch it, I will very likely do other ones on on just the different aspects of how I set it up, uh, how I set up my switch layers, how I set up my rigging. And, but for right now, um, I'm going to call it a nine on this one.